In this video, we're first going to take a look at the one second universe, and then we're going to dive deeper into an event that happens at just about one second into the history of the universe, that of neutrino decoupling, and we're going to explore some of the implications that has. Let's get into it. Let's take stock of our situation. We're here at the one second juncture, and at this point, the universe is a lot less dense than it was just a little previously. One second marks the end of the Hadron Epoch, which started at 10 to the minus 6 of a second. At 10 to the minus 6, the universe was as dense as an atomic nucleus, but at this point, it's only as dense as about a ton of mass energy per cubic centimeter. This is mostly composed of photons. In fact, photons, mostly in the form of x-rays, are so dense, there are so many of them in such a small amount of space at this time, that you have a ton's worth of photons in any cubic centimeter and you have a gram's worth of protons in any cubic centimeter. The universe is thinning out, having cooled to the temperature of 10 billion Kelvin. Now let's jump into that world. Obviously you wouldn't be able to stand in that world, but theoretically, if you were to place yourself in that world and stick out your arm and look around at arm's length, you wouldn't actually see anything because the light's not traveling far enough. It's too dense for the light to travel far enough for you to be able to see that far. But if you would be able to see that far, the universe would be expanding such that at arm's length, the universe is moving away from you at about the pace of walking. And it's at this point that the thinning of the density of the universe reaches the point that neutrinos, a very, very tiny particle, are no longer crashing into other particles that are preventing them from just going on their merry way across space. But at this point, it becomes thin enough that the neutrinos decouple, and the neutrinos start shooting off forever without hitting anything ever again. These neutrinos are theoretically detectable, but as of yet, we don't have anything even coming close to sufficient technology to detect this background, so we're going to have to wait on that. But if we do find it, it would be very similar to the cosmic microwave background, which were photons, which were released at the mark of 380,000 years into the universe's history. So at the one second mark, neutrinos were decoupled and freed. And therefore, we expect and predict a cosmic neutrino background. Let's now dive deeper into the story of these neutrinos decoupling. These neutrinos that had been crashing into particles wherever they would go, such that they couldn't just travel freely, were not just innocuously doing this. As they're doing this, they're converting protons into neutrons and neutrons into protons. And this process makes for a roughly equal amount of protons and neutrons. However, a proton weighs slightly less than a neutron. So to convert a proton into a neutron, you need more energy than to convert a neutron into a proton. So long as the neutrinos are moving fast enough that they have enough kinetic energy, that's gonna lead to an equal amount of protons and neutrons. Once you reach that point where the kinetic energy is not high enough to convert a proton into a neutron, but it is high enough to convert a neutron into a proton, it's at that point that the ratio of protons to neutrons starts getting skewed. And you have more and more protons, the lighter particle, and less and less neutrons, the heavier particle. That brings us to the moment of decoupling at one second, where the ratio is not one to one of proton to neutron, but rather six to one of proton to neutron. If not for decoupling happening now, these neutrinos would have converted all of the neutrons into protons. We would have a one to zero ratio of protons to neutrons. But thankfully, decoupling happened and the neutrinos stopped converting the protons into neutrons. But that's not the end of our story because neutrons themselves decay into protons. They have a half-life of 10 minutes and 11 seconds. And what this means is that by the time we reach the three-minute universe, we're going to be looking at a universe with seven protons for every one neutron. And that's going to be very important, as we're going to see there. Having now accounted for the one-second universe, we're going to turn our attention forward to the lepton epoch that starts at one second. If you like this video, like it, and if you want to know everything, subscribe.